Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 29th, 2024. Well, I apologize, I'm getting started just a little bit late this morning, so I'm going to move right on through this. Let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, we had Asian markets that were up across the board looking pretty good. Shanghai moving up 0.79%, and I think this is one of the highest um, um, pushes that Shanghai has had in some time here on their index. So looking pretty good across the board there. European markets, a um, little bit mixed this morning, but just, mo just mostly um, kind of hovering around the flat line here today. Um, we have the uh, FTSE MIB is down, but everything else is just slightly higher this morning. U.S. futures are trying to push a little bit higher this morning. Um, also trying to take advantage of that uh, Friday close where we moved up sharply based on tech and just hopeful um, recovery here in the market. So we're looking pretty good here this morning. If we take a look at oil prices here this morning, well, we've got um, oil just a little bit lower. Oil futures at 84.64 a barrel, down just 21 cents. Brent is at $89 a barrel, down 50 cents. Natural gas is up just about two cents here this morning. If we take a look at our precious metals, we've got gold going higher this morning, up by $5 an ounce. Silver is also up, copper, platinum, palladium, um, all looking higher here this morning. And then if we take a look at our cryptos, well, cryptos are going the other direction, actually showing red across the board there with Bitcoin down $1,372 a coin here this morning. So looking pretty much, uh, well, a little bit of a press here on those cryptos. So not feeling so happy today. Let's take a look um, at um, what's going on in our bonds. Well, our bonds are just ever so slightly lower here this morning. We have the Treasury two-year at 4.97%. The 10-year is coming in at 4.63%. And the 30-year is at 4.74%. So although they're coming down just a tiny little bit, we are still in a situation where the bond market is really disagreeing with the overall stock market right now, giving it a little bit of heartburn, um, as a matter of fact. And if we start seeing those tick back higher, be very, very careful. Watch for that market to slip just a little bit. Let's take a look at, um, well, actually, I think we covered everything. So how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. It was a busy weekend for me. I don't know if you folks had the same, but not a restful weekend at all. So let's just crank right back up here and see what's happening and take a look at our indexes and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Remember, we want to kind of shake off a little bit of that bias and just take a look at the charts for what they are, not for what, they, what we want them to be. Well, you can see with a really nice hold of this price support and those big tech reports from Microsoft and Google really gave us a lift to the upside. Now the question is, can we continue to follow through knowing that we've got some big tech reports coming um, this week as well? We'll want to keep a close eye on these resistance levels. Now, if we take a look at this downtrend here, there's a very good chance we could break this if the bulls continue to find that upside pressure here in the market. Breaking through this little area of price resistance and getting back above that big old black candle would be a good first step. And then if we can push on through up here, then um, look at that significant resistance level here and the next one above. Those will be the challenge points, I think, here in um, the diamond, seeing whether we can push on through those major areas of price resistance in the chart. And at the same time, we're going to have to deal with that 
uh, moving average resistance. Notice that our 50 day moving average is slipping right into here. So as we push back up, we're going to have to deal with those major moving averages here in the diamonds. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration today and push back, I would suggest that pushing back down in this area, we could find some really nice support right here in the chart and potentially hold here. If we just wanted to rest a little bit here today, that might be something to be looking at. Breaking back down below that area, I think would raise a little bit of concern, maybe a little bit of fear of the market, pushing us down into this level to retest those lows. If we broke below that, We've got to have something in the market to really encourage uh, us to break on through there. And we don't have a lot of data today to really um, inspire that kind of move. And I think as we move through the end of this month, there is that little bit of end of month window dressing that could keep us a little bit elevated here um, going into the first of the month. Um, I don't know that we're going to have to immediately start worrying about the sell in May and go away. Um, whole phrase. I, I don't really uh, buy into any advice that rhymes necessarily because we've seen a lot of years where, uh, well, that just wasn't a thing. So watch the, watch the price action carefully and remember price is more important than pretty much anything else. Focusing on that and not worrying about the whole May uh, rhyme just yet. Let's take a look at our SPY. SPY also moving up here nicely coming up into that downtrend here on the chart and you can see right here we're pushing into a significant level of price resistance and also the downtrend so if we can find that bullish energy to push on through here that's going to be pretty important here on the spy and certainly possible with big tech the way it is um, right now seven companies in the s p 500 are now 34 percent of the entire s p 500 so with that much dominance, it certainly is possible if we can keep tech moving higher, then we can dominate the majority. Even though the majority of stocks in the S&P could be going sideways to down, seven companies can lift us um, pretty easily here. So if we take a look and push up through that downtrend into this next level of resistance, that's where we're going to come into contact here with that 50 day moving average and whether or not we can push on through there and um, break through to that next level. So watch that area. We've kind of got this accumulation of resistance with our 50 day moving average here, our downtrend, this major moving average here, or major um, price action congestion and price action congestion here. So this zone is going to be very, very important to the SPY and those bulls. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration, then pushing on down, I would suggest to push back into here. Maybe if we took a little bit of time to breathe a little bit and rest, if we were to break down below there, I think we would maybe fill this gap and come back down, test that high side of that candle right there. Now, beyond that point, the market is going to need something to get a little bit fearful. And once again, heading into the end of the month, a little bit of window dressing and, and not a whole lot of data for the next couple of days, we may um, not find that energy to push on down through here, but certainly this would be the next level that we would test if we did. Our QQQ, very similar situation to the SPY, moving up here substantially, left a big gap behind, trying to push through a major area of price resistance. And there really is a zone between here and here that's going to be fairly significant on the price resistance front. Can we push on through there, pushing up into this downtrend in the chart? And then, of course, we're going to be pushing right into that 50 day moving average up here. So if those bulls can find that inspiration and break through this area of price resistance in the chart, pushing up into here, well, then we're going to deal with that 50 day moving average in this major area of price resistance with an overhang of that downtrend in the chart. Certainly doable with the tech earnings that are coming up, but we'll want to watch that carefully. 
And then if we take a look at the downside potential in there, failing in here, I would say a pushback down to test this little price support right in here is certainly possible. Beyond that point, we may fall. Testing Friday's low. Beyond that, there is that open and gap that could get filled down into here and if we were to break on below that area notice we've got this little upside trend we might catch a little bit of support right here and even if we had some um, bearishness show up in the market that may give us a little bit of a price hold there on our QQQ. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM also nice little surge to the upside. We will want to notice we created this little upside trend right in here and we broke the downtrend here in the chart. So if we can push on through the next attack, I think it's going to be up in here. Remember, there's going to be a lot of focus on um, tech earnings um, this week. So we'll want to keep a close eye on that. But if we were to, and, and, and obviously um, tech doesn't hold as much weight here in the, the Russell, but if we get good tech push, oftentimes what we can see is the Russell suffers a little bit because of the rotation, people pulling money out of these small techs and diving heavier into the big techs. We'll want to watch that carefully. Now, if we find bullish inspiration pushing up in here, looks likely. And then we have had such a resistance area up in here. Pushing beyond there is going to be really important, I think, for IWM. If we can get up here, we'd probably need to have a little hold up here to then start moving back up and, te and testing some of these areas of resistance in the chart. If those bears were to find inspiration here, well, then pushing right back down here to test this green line looks like a possibility trying to hold that trend line as support. Breaking down below there, well, you can see where we're going to go if those bears were to really engage here over the next couple of days. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, I better get the right symbol. Our VIX continuing to pull back. Um, the market is really trying to show that we don't have any concern about these bond yields or the pressures in the market. The geopolitical things don't bother us at all. We're just continuing to be super and hyper focused on big tech. And um, with that, there is no fear right now in the market pushing down. So if the bears, um, or excuse me, if the bulls can continue to find that energy, let's watch this area of price support here in the chart. If they push on down through here, well, we're going to be dropping back down into the maybe 13 handles here on the VIX showing uh, virtually no fear overall in the market. Um, you will want to notice there is this little bit of a trend that we had right here to the upside, more of a flat trend. They may come together and provide a little bit of price support. So if we were to find a little bit of bearish pushback here in the market, it's in this zone where I would be watching for that possibility. Let's take a look at our T20s. Our T2122 certainly has um, improved an awful lot. Oops, let's get to the daily here. Certainly improved an awful lot in the last couple of days here in the market, pushing back up, up over this 50% area here in the chart. Bulls are in control, more stocks rising than going down. If we can continue that bullish pressure, you'll want to keep an eye on. We still have plenty of upside room for those bulls to push into those major resistance zones in the chart and back up toward that bearish reverse zone in the market. If the bears were to find inspiration here today, then there is that open possibility that we could push right back down here in that chart and start looking at the bearish reversal zone. I think a lot is going to be dependent on um, uh, what the CTAs are doing. Um, Goldman Sachs came out and said there may be some selling in the CTAs, even in a flat type or up tape. 
just trying to unload some of that uh, frothy position from those CTAs. So keep an eye on that. And then of course we want to remember as we come into this end of the month, we're going to start slipping out from under the blackout period for these companies where um, buybacks and things like that can start to occur. And we might see some breadth improvement in the market based on those big tech buybacks. So watch uh, carefully for those changes here in the market. We take a look at our uh, T2108. Well, our T2108 pushed back up here on Friday. Now we didn't come back up through here and we still have this resistance to be thinking about here in the chart. We're still well below 50% here on T2108 at the percentage of stocks above their 40 day. So watch that carefully. If we can push back up into here, I certainly see that possibility that we could move back up here toward that 50% area here in T2108. If we were to reject this area, however, well, that could really bring a little bit of concern or worry to the market. So watch carefully there. And there's reason that there's a little bit of worry and concern with some of the data that we've got coming this week. If we take a look at our T2107, well, T2107 also had a little bit of an improvement there on Friday. But as you can note that when we move, just big tech giants like we did on Friday as the, for the most part, um, T2107 doesn't get a whole lot of benefit out of that. Um, percentage of stocks above the 200 improved just slightly. We're still holding above this 50% area and that's great. Um, they're still holding in there. Bulls are in control on this side of the equation. If they can continue to push up, we'll be looking at some of these resistance areas up here to be tested. If the bears were to find inspiration, I'd look for a little bit of support down here to be tested and possibly challenging that 50% area here on T2107. Our T2101, this is our breadth situation. And as we rallied on Friday, notice that our breadth was a little bit weak. We pulled back just here a little, little tiny bit. Remember, this could be affected by um, corporate buybacks and things like that as we start to slip out from under that uh, blackout period here for uh, companies. Watch this carefully. If those bulls can find that inspiration, continue to push, we need to see that breadth improving. We don't want to see the breadth of the market declining on a buy wave. So keep a close eye on that today. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar, well, not much going on here today. We've got a Dallas Fed manufacturing survey. This has been extremely negative, um, likely to stay negative, but showing a little improvement if the consensus is right up to a, a negative 11.3. But what we've seen in this market for the last year, manufacturing's terrible, we don't care. Um, as long as big tech's doing well, we don't care about um, the manufacturing jobs in the country. If we take a look, we've got a three-month bond auction and a six-month bond auction here um, um, also today to be watching for. As we move through the week, you'll notice on Tuesday, employment costs, we've got Case Shiller, we've got um, um, Housing Price Index, Chicago PMI, and a consumer confidence number that will be important. As we saw last week, the consumer sentiment number dropping just a little bit and their, their idea of inflation being just a little bit higher. Um, let's take a look at Wednesday. We've got Treasury um, um, International, excuse me, Treasury, Treasury refunding announcement. There we go, I got it out. Um, an ADP report, mortgage applications. We've got PMI, ISM, consumer spending, job openings report. We're gonna see the petroleum status. FOMC um, will be out on Wednesday and that's that worry that I said that we might have a little bit of concern and worry coming up here in the middle of the week with that FOMC. What are they gonna say with these latest hot uh, numbers. Right now the market is trying to say um, that they're not worried about it at all. I don't think the Fed has any willingness to raise the rates, but 
We'll have to see how they sound. Do they sound dovish or hawkish in the Fed um, uh, press conference? Then as we move into Thursday, we've got our job, uh, our challenger job cut report, international trading goods, our normal jobless claims, productivity and cost, factory orders, natural gas, Fed balance sheet, and then at the end of the week, we're going to come into that employment situation number and uh, PMI ISM numbers here as well with Baker Hughes. And then guess what? We're out of the about blackout period for the um, FOMC members. And they're going to be back out on the speaking trail, adding that, um, well, volatility maybe to the market as they continue to speak. Let's take a look at what's happening on our earnings calendar today. In our earnings calendar, well, we've got a few things here today to be paying, paying attention to. Um, I'm going to just cover a few of these. These will be in the blog. If you want to catch those, we've got um, the full list. DPZ, DPZ popping up here this morning um, in a pre-market um, earnings report. We've got Ben. Been trying to move a little bit higher. We've got on semiconductor here this morning. We're going to look at SOFI here this morning. So a few of those notables here this morning. This afternoon, we're going to hear from AMKR. We've got um, CHGG. We've got uh, BRX will be in there. We've got FLS. We're going to hear from um, MSTR. We've got Rambus in there this afternoon, WWD, y, YUMC, just a few of the notables here for this afternoon. Remember, as we go through the week, we ramp up and we're going to be getting Apple earnings this week. So just kind of keep in mind, that's a major market mover on the horizon. We'll want to be watching carefully for those big events in the market. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you can do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment that helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who has been doing that. Um, the numbers have been coming up there and I do truly, truly appreciate that a lot. Thank you to everyone who shares these videos out on your social media feed. Just click that link pick up that link and drop it in your social media. That helps a bunch. And just a huge shout out to everyone who supports the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. And that's just below the title of the video. So thank you so much. You'll also find the link to the morning blog just below the title of the video there as well. Let's take a look at a few of these stocks setting up. And remember guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in this market remembering that quite a little bit of volatility, quite a little bit of uncertainty going on here as we continue to battle between big tech rising, raising the market and bond yields uh, kind of tampering things and making um, that inflation worry um, come to the forefront of the traders' minds as well. So a little bit of battle going on there. Let's take a look at the stocks. First off, um, Alcoa continues to set up here in a pretty nice way. Liking the way uh, we've consolidated here, we've got that little bit of bullish push pushing here to the upside. I would watch carefully for that opportunity that we can break through this substantial resistance in the chart and really start to see that pushing on higher here. Keep an eye on Alcoa. I think we also need to be keeping an eye on GLD. GLD holding in this nice little bullish upside trend, holding in this pattern, uh, may have that opportunity to push on higher here, particularly if we happen to see the dollar continue to weaken. Notice that the dollar has been consolidating in this little resting pattern here in the chart. And if we were to come out here and find that trend and continue to see that push here, to the upside in the dollar. And there may be reason just beyond our bond yields for that to happen. We're seeing some real weakness in the Japanese yen fell to 160 yen 
to a single US dollar. So a lot of weakness in some currencies out there, a lot of fluctuations going on. We'll want to watch carefully here if that dollar continues to strengthen. And then if we take a look at things like GDX, the miners here on the gold side, really reinvigorated here last week, pushing back up. Now we're going to have to watch this area right here. That that breakout resistance but keep an eye on that if we continue to see these gold miners push on through to the upside i would keep a keep a pretty close eye on some of those if you look at stocks like uh barry gold trying to pick back up and recover that trend um, au moving up we've got uh, KGC showing lots of bullishness continuing to run to the upside so some of those gold miners looking really good if we look at uh, GDXJ GDXJ also doing that same thing the junior miners trying to push back up maybe trying to pop through you could take a look at things like Newmont now Newmont's I it's not a junior miner but as you can see pushing up here breaking through this resistance i think that's a really important area up here if we can hold this up here we may slide out here just to hold on to that trend but watch that carefully here in newmont as well other places here in the market boy take a look at some of the defensive sector areas of the market PepsiCo had a pretty good week last week pushing up and although on Friday it fluctuated here just a little bit as we deal with this price resistance you'll want to notice we're starting to pick up here in some of these old boring dividend pairs that little bit of a defensive um, type move here in the market to move along with gold and silver and things like that I would be keeping an eye on stocks like uh, PepsiCo take a look at Coca-Cola broke through a major resistance here in the chart if it can hold up in here then maybe we can look for more upside here in PepsiCo take a look at um, Kerry Dr. Pepper Kerry Dr. Pepper had a big upside pop here on earnings breaking through some resistance in the chart as you can see here any rest consolidation up here could set up some bullishness if we take a look at um, Mondelez these boring companies starting to show these bullish patterns breaking the downtrend we are pushing into a resistance zone here that could limit the upside move here in Mondelez but just remember if we can break through that or hold this higher low that's what begins a uptrend in the market we have to hold those higher lows and then we can start seeing that bullishness this is where institutions make that decision here in the chart are we going to move on higher so keep an eye on some of those defensives now we're also seeing some of that defensive sector retail in here the big tech or big retail like walmart breaking the downtrend trying to push through let's see if that can break on through if the market's going to be really bullish we're going to need those retailers to show us that and then we've got target trying to come back up here just a little tiny bit we've got this support right in here we'll want to be watching we slipped out of that downtrend and faded back if we can hold in here this is how w bottoms or that double bottom can get formed so watch that carefully if we can hold in there and then seeing costco uh, Costco also trying to test this major resistance in the chart to see if we can push on up and resume some kind of an uptrend here there's that W formation here on Costco so keep an eye on that um, beyond that point let's take a look at our um, uh, oil sector here um, if we look at XLE XLE is continuing to hold into this bullish pattern here looking pretty good and if I look at a weekly here this is a pretty substantial weekly chart if you notice that's a major breakout and notice that we're holding this area of support up here if we continue to see pressure geopolitically in the market watch for that opportunity that those could push on higher here in energy so um, watch that one closely also let's take a look at our financials if we take a look at our whoops our financials here you can see 
running in a little bit of a downtrend feeling that pressure here and again it's those bonds that are creating that worry and concern here if we were to see the bulls find that inspiration and break this above this resistance here then maybe everything's going to be great if we slip here i would watch that pretty closely and we're also seeing the regional bank etf running into that trouble here as well just dealing with downtrend and price resistance a little bit of uncertainty in those financials and last but not least um, you know one of the things you would not um, typically see if we were super super bullish if the market was really confident we wouldn't typically see utilities doing so well utilities a big strong move here to the upside if we can press through this resistance and hold up in here then look for some more upside opportunity in utilities Again, it's more of a safety play when we start to see stocks uh, like NEE doing so well and a big strong dividend payer, you'll want to be paying close attention to that because maybe we're not as confident as the market is trying to show us and a little bit of safety uh, play is coming into the market. So watch carefully there. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I will see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have an awesome Monday. Wishing you all great profits. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.